formally beginning the interview, I want to I want to acknowledge your your um, although you have sort of uh, family reasons for being in Knoxville, um, uh, I, I do appreciate you coming down to uh, to Knoxville for the interview and taking time. And I know you're leaving for Wisconsin today, so we definitely want to get you out before the sun goes down. <laughs> but we, I appreciate your generosity in saying you don't you know you're not you don't, you don't have to be out the door exactly at two o'clock. I don't see how my story could be that long. <laughs> well, some. <laughs> Um, but and I also want to thank on, on on the record your daughter for 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 uh, for arranging uh, in many ways arranging this interview and your daughter's name again was Geraldine and I just explained how she got that name it's not a derivative of Jerome. Well, let me now begin the formal sort of part of the interview and this begins an interview with Jerome C. Altenberg, um, um, who, who is a native uh, of Wisconsin and. Uh, this interview was with Kurt Peeler and Francis Mooney on September 26, 2006 at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, Tennessee. And let me begin by a, a very open-ended uh, question. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about your parents, particularly you mentioned over lunch your father for a while worked for the railroad and then became owned, owned a series of restaurants in Wausau, uh, Wisconsin. Well, no, it's restaurants in Wausau and in Chicago. Oh, okay. Chicago is a hotel restaurant, and it's almost a hotel restaurant in Wausau. Uh, my mother was a stay-at-home mom. Was, they all were in those days, I think. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you were born, were you, were you, uh, was your father working for the railroad then, or did you already? already uh, he was working for the railroad then. And I suppose, I think, after my birth, I got him off, and he was working in hotel restaurants. Mm -hmm. Did, had your father served in the military at all? No. No. Um, did you have any family members, extended family, that had served in the military? No. Um, you mentioned um, you were born born in Wausau. Um, or no. were you born in Chicago? No, in Chicago. Born in Chicago. How old were you? Were, do you remember moving to Wausau? About, uh, six. Six or seven. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what year you moved to Wausau, roughly? I was born in 29, so therefore it would be 1936. Um, was your fa it sounds like your father was able to stay employed during the Great Depression. Is that? As a cook. As a cook. Well, also, no. I uh, was a Kirby vacuum cleaner distributor in Milwaukee, and he was a salesman in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. or he, excuse me, he was a salesman in Chicago after he got off the railroad. For Kirby, and then we moved to Wausau, so back in the restaurant business, and then back to Milwaukee. Uh, he went back to selling Kirby's. The Kirby vacuum. Kirby Kirby. vacuum. And he would go door to door, and so did I. <laughs> Before I was a distributor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> um, you that's, a, that's a lost art, by the way. Jordan, I, yeah, I, I, I can't think of. It, I mean, even when I was growing up in the '60s, the, 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 the vacuum, for example, the vacuum cleaner salesman was still very common. I remember, uh, I had a real uncle who, who sold vacuum cleaners for a while door to door. Um, you mentioned your mother was stayed at home. Um, was she active in any clubs or no, no. How about the church? How active was your family? Quite active. Quite active. The Catholic Church. Catholic. Um, now, if I remember correctly, you were the oldest uh, of three. Of three. And and you have a, a brother and a sister, or, or uh, brother and a sister. Sister's the youngest. Mm -hmm. Did your brother or sister do any military? No. no. So you're the only one in the family. Well, my daughter did. Uh, she enlisted. Which which daughter? The one? General. General, and she did. She did. What, what branch did she serve in? The army. The army. Could you? Um, in fact, uh, she moved down to Alabama, following a guy, mm -hmm. and they were broke. So, in uh, order to get a job, uh, she enlisted, and she called and says, "We got married." And 
I joined the army. I said, I can understand one or the other before I vote. <laughs> so it didn't have anything to do with your own experience in the military? No. Um, just to follow up on that, were you surprised at both, it sounds like? Or? Well, <laughs> I, uh, for many years, I called, oh, what's his name? My son in law <laughs> and then Rod Boy, but now I don't call him. Call him now anything. you don't call him anything. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, you were six when you left Chicago. Do you have any me memories of Chicago, of your neighborhood? Or? Just one. Uh, I, I think it was in Halloween Eve. I, I should say two. Uh, Halloween Eve and my dad took me trick or treating, and I was allowed to wax windows of the bar soap, or soap windows, I should say. And then, uh, I don't know if it was Warsaw or, or Milwaukee, but my mother was changing my brother's diaper on the kitchen table, and the street of lightning went right over her head through the house. And that was, those are the only memories of that age that I had. But, and it didn't... It also, didn't also we, we would drive... My grandparents lived on a farm in Milton, Wisconsin. When we drive up there, I would always sleep or lay up in the back window of the back seat. That was my spot in the car. <laughs> no seat belt things. <laughs> Well, that, that, that thing, I mean, I even remember cars in the 60s had that, because I used to sit at the 60s, we're talking about the 30s. Yeah, but even up until the 60s, they survived. You could, I remember yeah. as a kid, that space that you, you as a small kid, you would go up and now they would, re you know, they'd arrest you. That's for, right. Um, you're, um, you lived in Milwaukee, you moved to Milwaukee before Wausau. Um, no, after. After, so Wausau and then Milwaukee. Chicago, Wausau, Milwaukee. Uh, what, 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 what do you remember about Wausau and Milwaukee? Um, and I guess where did you go? End up going to high school? Was it in Wausau? Was it in no, Milwaukee? It's, uh, it, well, a suburb of Milwaukee, West Dallas. Mm -hmm. That's where I went to high school. Not much about Wausau, uh, except that uh, as a teenager. Go to walk back to Wausau because my cousins are, and there is the second highest point in Wisconsin is called Rib Mountain in Wausau, and we would take a quarter barrel and go up on the little what was called Sunset Point, was a little three-sided log cabin and party. <laughs> <laughs> and I was I was in Wausau on VJ Day. And we stole toilet paper out of Hotel Wausau and went up on the roof and stole toilet paper off. Off the Hotel Wausau. Yeah. Do you remember where you were when Pearl Harbor occurred? Oh, yes. Uh, in West Dallas. Uh, I remember hearing that on the radio. And in fact, I ran across the field to friends out when I was 12 years old and they weren't, they didn't know about it and told them. I was, as a youth, I was very interested in World War II. I, I listened as much as I could, read as much as I could about it. And I had, oh, wait a minute, I have an uncle. Yeah, he was, well, I guess he was drafted. He was and uh, came back, but he was on Guadalcanal. Uh, with, with the Army or the Marines? With the Army. And he contacted the Marines and they just really would kill him. Did you write to him while the war was on? or, or? I would cut out cartoons of magazines and paste them in a book and send them. Send them. Send them. Did your interest in the war, did that, you know, Influence your decision at all to enlist yourself? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It was just a case of uh, where the government lied to me. They said 
if I enlisted as opposed to being drafted, no reserve time. So I took the extra year of fellows that served with me that were drafted to hold any reserve time. So you're pretty sure you were going to be drafted? Going, going back to World War II, you mentioned you followed the war really closely. Um, did you did you buy any any bonds? Did you say? Oh sure, oh yeah, yeah sure, oh yes, oh. eighteen seven with the quarter there. Yes, like I earned eighteen seventy five. And um, did you were you involved? Were you in the Boy Scouts or any other organization growing up? Yes, Boy Scouts. What rank did you make? Uh, I never made. Uh, First class. First class. Did you did were you involved in any scrap drives or any um, paper paper sure. paper always always save people. What about did you remember any of the sort of blackouts? Did you did did, uh, did your town have any blackouts or practice blackouts? Yes, uh, on occasion, and also uh, now they call it recycling, but uh, it was recycling of tin cans. Uh, then, and in order to buy a tube of toothpaste, you had to take the empty toothpaste to the drugstore, and of course, uh, the gas rationing uh, the sticker, but because my dad at the time was in sales, he got one that allowed for more gasoline, but then he was of the age where we told him, he said, either get a job in industry or you'll be drafted in the CDs. Because he was in that age too old for combat, but, but old enough for, old young enough, enough for the CDs. Young enough for the CDs. Yeah. So, of course, he went into Alice Chalmers and was a tool grinder, what they call it, tool grinder. I don't know what that was, but I still have a pair of his safety guns. And what, what plant did he, where, where was the plant? Was that was Chalmers, West Dallas, Wisconsin. That was famous for tractors. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it's a well-known com company. Um, so for the for the war, I mean, he, he worked worked in, in a factory. Yeah. So in a, in a sense, your father did a number of different things in the 30s yes. and into the war. Yes. Um, did he leave he, Did he leave the factory after the war? or did Back in the back in Queen Back in Queen Sales. And, did he ever go back to the restaurant business or no? So, so he retired from the restaurant business. From 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 the did he, oh. he, from the, the vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. And so there's a real. It sounds like there's a real link, family link, in terms of your going. Well, uh, I was going to Marquette, and I started selling Kirby's uh, weekends or. Uh, uh, vacation periods, and I was making more money part time than my major, which was journalism, would ever pay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you were. I was hooked, and I was totally independent. Uh, I didn't have a boss. Yeah. So I was totally independent. Now, did you graduate from Marquette? No, I quit in April of my junior year because I went into the military, you know, which was which was dumb people my junior year. You couldn't get them to defer. Well, you, well, you decided to enlist. But I, I, I could have gone back with the GI, but uh, I got married for some reason the family and that wouldn't work down our way. You were, uh, so I presume, uh, did you go to a Catholic school or to, to the public school? Public, public school. Public schools. I went to a Catholic school as a youth. First Catholic school in Milwaukee was called St. Barbara's. And if you were in Polish, what, were you, what was your reason for living? <laughs> Polish nuns. So I refused to go back to that school, and I went to another Catholic school. But when we moved to West Dallas, I went to public schools. And um, well, it's a, it sounds like there was. There was quite a lot of attention between the poles and the non-poles in that in that one particular. Was it just the school, or no, was it the name school? It just was the school. school, sure, because the other school was maybe three, four blocks away. Yeah, and that uh, it was just it was just 
horse nuts. And they were mm. <laughs> uh, I'm still using rulers back in those days. Yeah. Um, when you, uh, your interest in journalism, would you remember? I was going to be a Hemingway. And you, and so you. It sounds like you. When you said you followed the World War II news, you sounds like you follow. You read the newspapers quite regularly. Yes. Yes. Um, was it started by the war? Or was that even earlier than the war? Was it what? Was it started by the war? You were interested in news, or did it even? No, I mean it's just the war. It was the war that really. Yeah. Well, there was no other war that I knew so. Yeah. yeah. And you, it sounds like you just kept the habit up. Yes. Now you mentioned Hemingway. Um, had you read Hemingway? Yes, uh, I was quite a reader. And uh, when I went to the military, that was the end of it. When you were growing up, I mean, what did you read? You mentioned Hemingway in the newspaper. Well, uh, what were some of the, the. There was. Freddie Pyle was a favorite author of mine, and there was another one that was William Slipsman. William Shearer? No. Bill Malden? No. I, 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 I'll, I'll give up now. <laughs> but, uh, and, um, he, he wrote, uh, we were about Steinbeck. Oh, John Steinbeck, yes. John Steinbeck, there you go. Yeah. And, um, and so you, you were interested in, in journalism. Um, what, why Marquette? Um, well, it was. That was, they were famous for that engineering mm -hmm. uh, at the time. And as I was telling Fran, uh, 16 credits was uh, $160 a semester. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, how did you, how did you, I mean, how did you like college? Um, I, that's fine, yes. yes I enjoyed it. Had you been on your high school newspaper? Um, oh, yes. I was also in high school, I was in uh, uh, Footlights, that was a drama club, and then I directed plays for the junior high school, which is called Spotlights. I was a student director for that. H had you played any sports or? Uh, cross country, that's all. That would I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. uh, not big enough for football, not tall enough for basketball. But, but it sounds like very active in, in sort of the school newspaper I, and the, I, and the I literature. Was, I was. I got a couple of awards for activity uh, at graduation. Um, you mentioned, um, and I can't, I, 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 I'm, I've been waiting to ask you, but you, you mentioned you started selling vacuum cleaners in, in college, uh, first as a part-time job. And you even said, it, I mean, selling door-to-door -door is now a lost art. Could you describe what, you know, particularly in the 1940s, what it was like to, you know, particularly when you were beginning, because you, you had to learn things. Well, I had what I called the little boy look, and they weren't afraid to let me in the house. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we carried just the motor unit of the Kirby vacuum printer. It had a handle, and in those days, there were, people had problems with moths. And I had what was called a crystallator. They put uh, crystals in this crystallator and they would explode and fumigate. And that crystallator was on the front. We call that unit a pig because it looked like a, a pig. And people really didn't know the name Kirby too well then. And uh, they would say, oh, Kirby, what is that? And drop that pig in the door and roll it towards so I'll just then I come up, I'll go out to get the cord, I'll be right back and then we play the box the rest of the vacuum put it put together because it was a very versatile unit. It was a canister, it was an upright, it was a floor polisher, it was a run shampoo. You do all these things with this one unit. But that's that's all I got through the door. Well what's that? Oh, so for you, the trick, the trick was to get through the door. And, and then once you got through the door, I mean, how did, you know? Well, a lot of, a lot of the salespeople, or the think they'll do a lot of talking, just the opposite. 
to do a lot of listening mm -hmm. to see which way their mind is going. And if the wife wanted the vacuum cleaner, the husband was saying no, you just sat there. She got it. But if the wife was saying no, pack up a paper, please. Just, 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 just go. <laughs> or if she would sit on the arm of the chair, get through this fast, and go. That was a sign of total disinterest. So it sounds like part of what, what makes, the way you're describing it is, is know when to leave. More even when, that that, because you were just wasting your time. And no one has shut up. If I didn't have the order within an hour, uh, I would help. For a lot of sales, we sit there for three, four hours. And sometimes they wear them out, but I, I wasn't at that sales. So you, you sort of allotted an hour. And, and, and I mean, what was a good day in, se in selling? Not really. You know, no special day. No, there's no. I mean, how many, how many, I'm just sort of curious, when you first started, how many would you sell a day? How many, you know? Well, I have a record of about 72 in a month. Yeah. But I would usually strive for at least 16 a month. 16. You have to deal with, I imagine, quite a bit of rejection. <laughs> that didn't uh, bother me no. at all. It, but the, um, I had two sons that I dissuaded from doing it, and they both had to go. They both had to do it. And in fact, the, the youngest one, uh, I said, no. So he went out looking for a job, and Kelly says, I got a job. So he said, I said, how much, how much is the cell phone? He told me, how much is the commission? He told me, I said, okay, if you really want to sell that bad, okay. And he, the rejection got him, not the no, but many people who set up an appointment and, no, and, and, not. and they wouldn't be there, or they wouldn't answer the door. That is a rejection that, that killed him. The no in the house didn't bother him. And what on, on the people that weren't home, I used to get back at them. I sold a lot of machines that way. I'd come back a couple of days later and say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't make it. I, I just couldn't call you. Boom. So it sounds like one of the things, one of your tricks was you were very detached about about, in the sense that it wasn't personal if people said no. Just don't. Not, not, no. Um, and even if people stood you up, you just, you just, it almost sounds like you just rolled along with it. and, and you had to. Yeah. Um, I, would, uh, I would knock doors all day, and, and a part time would got me knocking doors at night, uh, especially in the summertime when it's light, or in the wintertime, I'd uh, knock doors. In, large apartment buildings inside, but uh, I, uh, it didn't, I mean, rejection didn't bother me. And, and you can, you, when you came back from, just to follow up on the, sort of your, your, this part of your life, I mean, you, you, you went back to selling after you, when did you become a distributor? 72. Oh, okay, so you, you had a long career as... I started selling in 19. And my whole work, except for the military, the last paycheck, so to speak, I got was when I was discharged from the Air Force. All the commission the rest of my life. Both, both as a salesman and then as a distributor. Well, let me, um, you had followed World War II very closely, um, and you, you vividly remember VJ Day particularly. Um, yes. What did you, how did you, did you follow the, what we now would term the Cold War at all? I mean, not really, no. Um, how, how surprised were you by Korea when the war first broke out? Or did you? I was telling Fran this, we were talking about our first cars, which she was driving now. It's well, my first car when I was going to Marquette was a 37 uh, Dodge. And the Oldsmobile came out in 1950 with a Rocket 88. 
couldn't just go to a dealership and buy one. You had to order. They were still work up to uh, par on production. So I got my car in June of, of 50. Uh, that's when Korea broke out. I got engaged uh, New Year's Eve of 50, 51. And two weeks later, I realized what I had done. So I enlisted. And <laughs> damn it, she waited. So I, I got back and I says, well, when I was in Korea, the first sergeant and I had private quarters. And we had Korean houseboys for two bucks a week or two bucks a month. I don't remember what it was. But we keep the place clean. We get our laundry done. And so I couldn't give up this lifestyle. I gotta get married. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned over lunch, um, and um, you know you, that you had thought of the Air Force, but didn't like the. No, 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 no. I didn't think of the Air Force. When I was waiting in the, the center to go, the Air Force came over to me and wanted me to switch to the Air Force. I just told them I said, I'll take three, not four years. Okay. That, that was so that's when the Air Force came, you know, came up. Yeah. Had you thought of the Navy? Um, yes, and a friend of mine and I went down to join the reserves. He got in, but I didn't. I was blind, as far as the Navy was concerned. So so, so you wore glasses and... Yeah. And I was 4 in as far as the Navy was concerned. <laughs> But for the Army, that was, you had no problem passing your physical? No. No. <laughs> I even, I even drank a ton of coffee in the morning you know, to kick up my blood pressure. I could lay down. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so in some ways, the draft, I mean, it's sort of an obvious point, and we've had lunch, you know, talked about it over lunch, but I mean, it was really the draft that motivated you to enlist. Sure, to yeah. take the uh, three years of the reserve time. The reserve time. Um, did, you, did, you did you expect to go to Korea? Um, or did you hope that you might do service in Germany? Measles sent me to Korea. A case of measles and basic training. Uh, I was training with a unit that went to Panama for a year and Greenland for a year. But they said, well, Altenburg has been out for a while, set up with this unit, and that unit went to Korea. So the, getting measles at a certain was, 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 you might have had a very different experience in Panama, oh, Panama and Greenland, Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> which are such to pairing yeah. in terms of thinning your blood and thickening it up. Um, what, uh, you had, had, I mean, you had, had an uncle who served in the Army of Guadalcanal. I mean, what did, what did no, you say? No, he was Marines. Marines. Yeah. What did you, uh, and you followed World War II closely, and you read, for example, Ernie Pyle. What did you expect from the Army, going now, thinking back at your time, going in, what did you sort of expect from the Army? And I you didn't. Had, I didn't. You didn't. But I was fortunate. I was at the right spot at the right time. Uh, promotions and I made uh, sergeant first class in 13 months which is practically unheard of unless you're in the combat unit. You know. No that's very that, that's very even quick by World War, I mean, World War II standards I would even yeah. be very quick. Um, um, where did where did you were going back to the very beginning where did you report to enlist? Where did you enlist and where did they in no, what? Milwaukee and then where did you go after uh, Fort Sheridan? And then they put us on a, my first train ride in, uh, all across the country to uh, uh, San Pedro, California, which is the seaport for the city of Los Angeles. And that's where I took my basic training. It was in a uh, landing craft outfit, but that is where we ended up. So your, so your basic training was 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 very specific then. It wasn't just general infantry. No, it was just it was general. But but, but the idea that you but would the, 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 the unit was that's what it was. It was general. 
Yeah. Yeah. Basic. What do you re what do you remember about basic training? Picking up the cigarette butts <laughs> every morning, and we in night somewhere in the seventies we took the valley took the uh, Chevy Chase trip to California. You ever, did you ever see vacation? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and went back to, to uh, San Pedro, and the grounds, the so-called parade grounds, were a parking lot full of cigarette butts. <laughs> <laughs> Which was, it sounds like it was a surprise to you that the uh, that standards I had gone. So that was. I done, of course, I told the story. Hey, we were picking cigarette butts all the time. Or uh, we had a field strip, so there was no cigarette butts. That's what it was. A field strip that's, that's tearing open the paper and scattering the tobacco and blowing up the paper in a small bowl. So there was no filter cigarettes there. Mm -hmm. um, what do you remember of your, your drill instructor? Um, Sergeant Owen. He was a tall, thin guy. During basic, he was a drill sergeant. After basic, he was a real nice guy. And I said, uh, I had to call his name now, but I said, uh, when this is over, I'm going to kick your ass. And so I was really guy. And we, our final week of basic training was up in northern, central California. Uh, combat training, and that was over, we were all in the bar, the bar was closed, going back to quarters, and I come up, running full speed from behind him, and just kept going, <laughs> <laughs> so I did what I said I was going to do, so. What do you remember uh, about the sort of, um, you mentioned this was your first, first trip across the country by train. It sounds like your first time in California. Yeah, sure. First time out of state of Wisconsin. Really? You had except the you know, Chicago. Do uh, so you really hadn't traveled outside of Wisconsin, Chicago? No, well, I was I turned twenty one when I was in basic training and no I didn't. Um, so your family never took vacations outside mm -hmm. of what did you I mean, what did you think of the cross country trip and then California meeting and then meeting all these people with basic training? I mean you're well, I really didn't have much thought about the train ride across. Uh, yeah. Met some nice guys. Yeah. 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 Forged uh, any lasting <coughs> friendships? Any from, uh, from BC? No. Uh, for a while, we got back to some work later. And one time, one guy had kind of a, a reunion, reunion in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan. And stayed friends with uh, Corporal Smith, who was the chief driver for a chaplain over there. And kept up the friendship back and forth between Detroit mm -hmm. and Milwaukee for a while. Now he moved out to Indianapolis. Not as of today. Mm -hmm. How did you, um, I guess, um, what did you like? It, was there anything you particularly liked about basic training in terms of the rifle range? I mean, if, if it's possible, like basic training, and what? You didn't know what to expect, and you were there, and it was, it didn't pay to have any likes or dislikes yeah. because it didn't make any difference. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you weren't so happy about picking up cigarette butts with that. <laughs> well, no, no, I don't, uh, I corrected that. I said we had a field strip. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was yeah. done there, but yeah. the place was littered with them when I went back. Um, How often did you get assigned KP? Mm, in basic, I think it would be once or twice. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. much. It wasn't much at all. The military food uh, for breakfast, 
another egg eater. Uh, those are all dried eggs anyway, so uh, powdered eggs, I should say. And, and a cup of coffee and uh, bread and jelly was my breakfast. <laughs> that was the lunch and dinner. <laughs> it was okay. That was okay. Yeah, but, uh, breakfast. You mentioned you got the measles. I mean, how, how long were you out? Well, that was a case of this particular barracks, which also had the supply room, had measles in it. And so I work in a supply room. I've had measles, but I got them the second time. <laughs> so I ended up in the hospital for five days. And, and did you have complications or? Just, just, it was more, it sounds like court, it said court, a limited court. Uh, that's what it was. Yeah. But it was long enough that they, that when your, when basic was finished, they didn't send you out with the unit, the Panama, the unit that went to Panama. And, and, and so Altenberg goes, uh, that we'll put them with this unit. Yeah. So mm -hmm. And when did you join the unit? Um, and could I, you, I don't remember. Was it in the States? Oh, yeah, sure. So the unit went over together. Yes. Uh, the unit, did you, what, do you remember the name? What was the name of the unit there? Uh, oh, it was 409. 409. So yeah, you, it, was, it, was, it was commanded by a one star brigadier. General, this is General Catalog. Yeah. And uh, you know, he showed me that what he had on the 409. Uh, it was the 409 that I knew. Mm -hmm. Call the uh, building of servants, uh, service stations. Yeah. Um, it was uh, can't recall that at all. So, so your 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 four ninth was a very different outfit by the time you joined it. At least when it went overseas. Yes, but that was the same time period. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah you don't have. <laughs> well, look, you you joined the unit in the state. You don't remember where, but but um, how long were you in the unit before it was sent overseas? Can't recall that. Yeah. yeah. How did you get to Korea? How did you, you and your My youth? first cruise ship, two week cruise. And uh, how comfortable was the ship? Uh, I can't recall if it was on the trip over or, or back. But I had the lower bunk in the bow, and we had a and the bow up and slap. Up and slap. No sleep problem. <laughs> no way. And there was people from Milwaukee and Michigan, I mean Wisconsin and Michigan. And we play a game called Sheep's Head. It's played with 32 cards and uh, diamonds and salt. And spread out a blanket on the deck and play Sheep's Head all daylight hours. And chow time, there's always somebody jump in because <coughs> it's a five band game. So that's, that's what the trip over was. Then we near Yokohama saw a flying fish. And when you first got with the 409th, was there any kind of specialized training? That you were gonna, they were an engineering brigade? Uh, not really. No. Now, now, you're thinking back, I, I don't remember the purpose of it. I mean, the 523rd, there was a purpose, but <laughs> the other thing, I don't remember the purpose. Or well, at least that was told, it sounds like that was told to you um, for the for your for your unit. You know what? You said that, that you were never told the purpose. I suppose we were, but I, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, the 409th wasn't, uh, I understand that Korea was the first time they were, uh, they had integrated units of... Well, the story that came down on how that happened is for the African-Americans from plug out. They were over there as units. They were the Koreans of Pat. They wouldn't hold the line. They were just scattered. So that's why they entered the It was the 409th? No, it was a combat unit. Just the combat unit? No. So you, your unit didn't have any black soldiers? No. 
How long were you in Japan? You mentioned around 30 days. 30 days. Um, and in a sense, waiting, for, waiting to get deployed. Well, the, uh, the, the rumor was we could have stayed there. Uh, but the one star brigadier general uh, wanted to become a war hero and go into politics in California when he got back. So, 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 uh, that would no. just out. <laughs> But the rumor was pretty widely accepted. Accepted, and, and even if even, even if it wasn't true, it was the. Uh, and it was a, from there to we shipped on a Sasebo, Japan, which is a seaport on the southern tip. Uh, the train ride, of Japanese train, it was an interesting experience. What do you, What do you remember about it? The hard wooden bunks <laughs> I got to sleep in. How long did it take you to get down to the, the, the southern part? Like a couple of days. Mm -hmm. which, which is, I mean, if I could use that comment, I mean, it's sort of remarkable because now with a high speed line, they have, they I have mean, have you would be there within a few hours. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, it's sort of, I mean, I partly ask because I think someone reading that used to jump these train today. Um, By the way, uh, the, the cruise ship that we went from the States to Japan was called General Morton. It was a large troop transport. You mentioned um, over lunch, I mean, you liked Japan, the, the little time you spent there. Uh, what, what, what did you like? Uh, it just was a peaceful country. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Japan before the peace treaty, and after the peace treaty. And to make a point about the attitudes of the Japanese and the GI, before the peace treaty, if you're walking down the street, the Japanese would figuratively get off the sidewalk and, and walk in the gutter. But after the peace treaty, GI, you had better do that. And this is very simple to oh, you. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, you mentioned um, you also took your RR to, to Japan. Um, yes, that's what I. That's what I was. That, so there you, for this after the afterwards. After. What, what did you do at RR? Where did you go in Japan? The Ginza. <laughs> <laughs> in in Tokyo, or or you want Paul Harvey deal? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I mean, did you travel? Did you travel a lot outside of Tokyo, or did you? Um, no, and and that was a mistake because I should have gone to some of those real I found communities that were really nice. Yeah, so you didn't like go down to see Mount Fuji or or something. Oh yeah, we, we saw Mount Fuji. We were going by train. Yeah, but you, you didn't. Yeah, but you didn't. No. You, it was really Tokyo and the G But the Gizzo is an amazing place. Just an amazing place. In fact, I bought the culture pearls. We weren't married yet, but that was my wife's wedding present. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when you were in Japan, that was kind of, you were expecting to go to Korea at oh, that yeah, point? Sure this was just and so did, at that time, were you had you heard anything about what Korea was like? or? Had any ideas no. of what you'd be? When, when you're young, you just you're invincible. What the heck? <laughs> you're just going with the flow. Yeah. You mentioned you had followed, you know, World War II very closely, and then, I mean, how you had, and I think did you start following the Korean War, particularly when you knew your your, your number was coming up? And, and I guess what well, were you? Uh, not really, because I was in real, right after. I, I was, yeah, I was in Japan in August. He was. So, uh, but a lot, I mean, a lot happened in that, that you, 1950 or. But you don't, but I, I suppose I did. I, I can't recall that, but you don't get any newspapers over there when you're in Korea. Yeah. So, uh, whatever story you hear. Yeah. Well, I was in Korea with the 523rd. The back end of our compound was adjacent to the UN cemetery. Across the street was uh, 
graves under station. So when there were intense battles up north, the truckloads, uh, two and a half ton truckloads, piled high with bodies covered with canvas and ice on top of them, coming through the graves under station. So you could sort of tell the flow of the war by the truck tra and the body traffic, literally. One one time we they had so-called work we had to dig slip trenches because the uh, North Koreans were allegedly had, had some Russian bombers and they thought they might come down, but they wouldn't have any chance with those F-14s. <laughs> <laughs> now you, your unit went over to Pusan um, and you were, you were based in, in Pusan. Call myself Pusan Commander. And um, I mean, what was it like to arrive in Korea? I mean, you remember some of your first responses of arriving in Busan? And any sort of initial impressions? Oh, we're here. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> Dirt roads. Mm -hmm. They had streetcars. Uh, one time, uh, because being a supply sergeant, uh, I had. Uh, my choice of vehicles any time, and, and I was in Busan. Two things: saw a streetcar, run over a little girl, and another time, the rock soldier walked into the side of my jeep, compound fracture his legs, and this officer was. because he got hurt. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned you didn't start out as a su supply a supply clerk and there was there was sort of a there was sort of a story there which which you told us before we got uh, Francis wasn't in the room but it was a, it was a good oh you no no cut it up uh, No, 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 it's, um, um, well, let me ask you the question, um, you, you sort of told the story of how you became, a, before we got started, just before we got started, how you became a supply clerk, but that was not your original classification, and, and uh, well, I was a corporal, and I was running the NCO club, also, I was in the bar, and had a urinate. So the latrines were too far away. Well, maybe I should back up here. The latrines are too far away. So I urinated through the fence. And we had permanent guards in the unit. And they were fellows that kind of screw up their own unit. Uh, they sent, were sent down to the brigade to be permanent guards. So they turned me in to the company commander who was a First lieutenant or second lieutenant. He says, uh, Altenburg, I'm going to bust you. I said, 
Kilisesi, Nakli Kilisesi yok. Aslında Kilisesi kurmamışım. E, a shop for the job. And they were looking for a supply center. And uh, I told them they knew company supply, which I didn't. <laughs> and I had on job self training. Uh, and I got a promotion to sergeant then. And then the company commander was due to rotate. And we have a clothing line. responsible for so much company property. He had a couple thousand dollars of uh, company property could account for. And I had uh, friends at the, uh, the depots and I made a paper turn in of his shortages which did exist as the paper turn -in. <laughs> so I got that other strength. <laughs> and that's how I got to be sergeant for the last 13 months. And in the unit I was also uh, the uh, running the NCO club that paid 90 bucks a month extra. It was a concept. And there was a uh, Below the lowest officer, right? Uh, warrant officer. So the warrant officer. I was at this depot. He liked this whiskey, so I took a board of uh, Canadian Club to him. And I got a truck with a 40 sheet supply with him. For a fifth of whiskey. And a quarter of whiskey, whatever it was. And aligned the concept up, plywood, built the stage, and brought in local entertainment. And we had it week. So who would you? I mean, who would you bring in? And what uh, kind Korean of groups? Yeah. And, uh, the two Koreans that worked in the quarterly uh, room, like the, company, or the uh, first sergeant and myself. And one of them got married. And we weren't invited to the wedding, of course, but they invited us to their home afterwards to uh, have kimchi and tea. And the bride, of course, was not allowed in the room. It was men were there. We didn't see the bride. She just the three of us were sitting there. I'm curious, before you became the sub supply clerk, what were you? What were you doing? I'm a clerk. I was a sergeant. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, no, I know. But but before doing supply, I mean, what were you doing besides running the NCO club? What was your? Uh, it, it was. Oh, I was in food service. Food service. Yeah, like food service. And, and, and Do it, doing what? Clerk. Just, uh, just typing. Just typing. Typing. Yeah. So you weren't actually doing. No, no. no you weren't doing it. Just doing typing. So you're, it sounds like you had a very routine, in Korea, very routine. Until I got this first. Yeah. But he, yeah. <laughs> uh, but in the sense, like you were, you were in Pusan the entire. Did you leave? Did you did you ever leave Pusan? Uh, did you or your unit? No. no. By the way, I've got another story to the, uh, the corporal of the buster. I went back to my unit. And told the sergeant I worked for uh, what was going to happen. He went in to the major's office. The major and storm it out of there. He went to the company commander and put him straight. <laughs> There'd be no bust throughout with it. I guess, how did you, um, I mean, a lot of guys would be just taking the bus, figuring they had their choice. How did you know that you could just chop around? Where did the shopping around, I don't know. Maybe they told me, you know, maybe the major told me. Maybe that uh, sergeant told me. I just don't, you don't know. know. I don't remember. 
Because they said a lot of guys just told me about being busted. Well, well, they, they were, yeah, well, no, they were looking for supplies. Do you knew this too? Uh, I was informed somehow or other. Yes, I, I don't recall. Yeah. How. yeah. When you you had to learn on the job, could you? What, <laughs> what was well, that? They they would have requisitions, and a certain job would come through. They needed uh, pipe, and I would just copy the other requisition. And uh, I never had any complaints and I screwed up. So you just looked at other paperwork and just and just figured all the paperwork and and, and, um, and I guess how many men did you have under you with supply as supply service? Just just one. Well, there's a story about this fellow, well, he was a private PFC. And he says, Sergeant, where are you? I gotta go into town. Just married, married even a little enlisted. I said, well, go see uh, Annabelle. I just, I so the next morning he says, uh, see Annabelle? Yeah. Where are we? No. You pass. <laughs> <laughs> you got the clap. And you got a disease over there. You do washing. You didn't get it. So he could have used the money. But he, but he, he didn't get it. And I left shortly. So you don't, you don't know what happened. How long? Um, what was the, I mean, as a, you know, a supply clerk, I mean, what was a typical day? Because you said it was more interesting in terms of the, you, you described the plywood deal. Um, <laughs> um, I had, well, the cooks always like socks and underwear. So I had always ate at the cook's table, which they better than the trooper's <laughs> job. And cooks worked on 24, off 48. So, of course, the uh, Korea, China is famous for peasants. So they go peasants. It sounds like, uh, you know, a lot of you are going with the flow, you, you have said before. Um, I was just curious, you know, did you have a sense of the greater mission that, you know, that you were there in defending South no. Korea? No. No. <laughs> sort of there for, just there for the peasant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm curious, because you mentioned going to this uh, Korean home after the wedding. Um, how, how much other contact, and you had Korean house boys. How much other contact did you have with Koreans? Every day. Every day. Every day. Because uh, they had Koreans working uh, on the base. And, uh, it was one time I was walking through a little village, and as, uh, as I mentioned, the Koreans registration was across the road. And here's two Australians. And there is Korean home and it was open. And Korean was treatment for head wounds. He had gotten beaten up. And I raced back to the unit, got a vehicle to bring it back. And they couldn't thank me enough. And over at their NCO club, they, they, they got me well oiled. <laughs> <laughs> so they were very appreciative. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned, I think, earlier. I remember you correctly about the priorities. You, you even, I think, put alcohol over over ammunition, if I remember. Well, the 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 state of priority on uh, material coming in was alcohol, food, and ammunition. In that order. In that order. <laughs> <laughs> and and you, you you it sounds like there was quite a bit of drinking. Um, Nothing else to do with it. Yeah. I mean, it, it also strikes, because you said you booked Korean entertainment. Um, how, I mean, it sounds like that was very popular, that, that people actually... Did, well, that's... That was, they had no other entertainment. Yeah. Did, what about, for example, did you ever see a USO show come through? Oh, uh, I... Ethel Merman, I heard something like that. Um, 
What about was there a USO club or or any Red Cross club in Tucson? That you there was a Red Cross club, coffee and donuts. Yeah, was that was it. That was it. Coffee and donuts. Yeah. Uh, but no, 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 sort of a USO club that um, that sort of had a home away from home. In fact, I think this is just a big trailer. Um, what about film? Uh, mo movies from the states? They would have movies. Most of the guys in the bar are watching movies. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I've lost my. Uh, it's there were, oh, in terms of mail service, how good was it? Or good. How, it was good. Really good. How often did you write home? Or did or did well, you? Uh, I did quite regularly. And when I was I got on board ship, I, I kept the day-to-day uh, -day experiences out of there. Something I would like, like to be. And how, I mean, how often did you write to your wife? Did you? Because she wasn't wife. I mean, your fiance. Uh, did probably you? a couple of times. Oh, okay. But she was, was daily on her days. <laughs> And on the back of the envelope of the email, the like the email I got to kick out of this. Run, mail, man, run. It doesn't strike me that you were ever in harm's way. Is that accurate? That That's you're correct. Yeah. Well, I, I probably was, but didn't know. I used to do some dumb things all by myself, but uh, looking back, it's a stupid thing to do. <laughs> what, what were some well, of those? Just, just going off alone. Oh, so just in, going in off the, in the countryside, yeah. Oh, okay, so you would go out in the countryside. Sometimes I would uh, just take a jeep just to get away for a while and go up in the mountains and stuff. Um, because I think by the time time it was reasonably secure around It was. Some, but it even was. so, that... And, uh, but we carry weapons. Yeah. Do you, I mean, just a year before, I mean, Kusan had really been the sort of Perimeter. I mean, it was not that I far. Just got pushed in. Yeah. Did anyone ever tell you stories of that while you were over there serving? Was that they, those guys? Were, they, they, those guys well, were long gone. And well, they were combat units. They weren't. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it was there. They, yeah. Um, it, and it sounds like the only time that that danger seemed to approach was that time they ordered you to to, to uh, dig slit trenches. That, That's yeah. Perceived uh, perceived the, threat. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, not, you know, um, in, in terms of, um, I guess in terms of supply, I mean, I'm not surprised to hear some of the, 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 the I mean, the World War II guys, you know, I've heard of whole jeeps being appropriated, and all, you know. Um, but I, it's I had a whole truckload of overcoats that was loaded on my truck. But I did not like that. Yeah. You know, I uh, didn't make extra money. But that was to the lower three graders, Air Force and Marines, because they could not get liquor or beer. So a Canadian club, for instance, was uh, 1250 a case. And at the bar, sold for 25 cents a shot, and so I determined how many shots I got out of a, a bottle, and that's what I sell it so, And some GIs sent home for money, and their parents had sent them American money, which was a court martial offense to have, and they knew that I had a lot of money in the NCO company. Korean money or a script, military script, and they exchange it. So when I got on, on the board ship, I had about five hundred dollars in the envelope because I was sending money home, which we only send a hundred dollars a month for. It's all they we could to be investigated at any more. I got on board ship and I handed this envelope to the ship's officer and he went, took two things and went crunching. Money just feels like money no matter how you got around. 
<laughs> I'm waiting the whole two weeks to be called in to ask about this money. And it was, and they gave it back to me on the way off. <laughs> and that, that came from the, the currency exchange and, 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 and selling of the, selling of the alcohol. Liquor to the the Marines and, Marines and Marine Air Force. Air Force Marines were the one. Uh, and to cover my extra purchases, I would go to another NCO for a buy this extra booze. And there's a form you're supposed to fill out. I said, look, I want all my records nice and neat. Just sign this, Lee. I'll type it up when I get back. <laughs> I guess, how, <laughs> how much sort of supervision was there? I mean, you, you I was fine. Yeah. It wasn't bothering anybody. No one ever, like, an inspector general just didn't make a routine visit or. So it almost, you almost described a situation where you'd have to really screw up. Yes. Because you know, uh, one, one officer, I think it was a major, the major, the county commander brought him in and said, hey, Oldenburg, uh, because the officers were given the colonial allowance to be able to buy all the clothes. Give the major a pair of shoes. I didn't know if I was going to check that. I said, no, sir. Refused the major. No way of knowing if I was being checked out, so I didn't. So you said no. Yes, sir. No. And that was it? That, that, was, that was it. But that, it strikes me as that's the closest you came to someone really you perceiving with being checked up out. Did you know of supply clerks? It sounds like you have to know. Is there a supply way? sergeant? Yes. Yeah, supply sergeant, supply clerk. I mean, were there some supply sergeants that. There was trading all the time. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the of this and that. You, and you would trade. You would just. Um, but did you ever have a sense there were some supply sergeants that really had their hand in the till? Never. Never. Concerned. Never. You didn't even didn't think about it. Didn't even think about it. What um, what were your impressions? I mean, you, you you gave some impressions of the Koreans, uh, but, but what other impressions do you have of, of Korean Koreans in Korea? I mean, you also went into the countryside. Um, I uh, I did the one bad thing at uh, one time. The first sergeant and I were out drinking. He was driving the jeep on the way back. Here's a Korean ride the bicycle. And and um, I mean, what, did, what were your impressions of the countryside? I mean, you had spent time up. Japan, yes, it was barren, no trees, no mountains. Barren mountains. So the Korean you remember is a very desolate. Both the countryside and the, 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 the city. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very angry one time when I was, was corporal like guard at the sergeant. But anyway, I was pulling guard duty. My wife was sitting, my fiance was sitting, a colored photo and a nice leather photo. And it disappeared out of my tent. And the shelf in there. And I looked at the gate. Uh, maybe I ought to make a little sergeant of the guard. I just had to be the gate at the time. And his career came in, showed his pants, and was in that. And I hauled him into the company for that. He said he bought him on the street. This picture of the gate. But he had thought he had the photo. It was a little photo. The picture? The picture was gone. So they, they sided with the Korean. Yeah. yeah. They didn't take away from him. Yeah. Or, or obviously punish him. Well, just take away from him. Yeah. So they couldn't, yeah. couldn't prove that he yeah. went in there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he worked on the yeah. compound. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
So he, he, yeah, he worked on the compound. He had access to the quarters. Those quarters had a little black silver. I mean, just typical mesh. Yeah. Well, you, should uh, we should, we should, because we've seen the pictures, the people reading this interview won't. You, you essentially lived in a wall tent your, your whole time in Korea. Uh, no, just in the 409. Just in the 409. Yeah, I, I was in the private quarters. So when you say private, how did that differ from the, the, the large wall tent? It was the building size large wall tent, so it was. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the Koreans, actually nothing. Um, what did you, um, what did you, th I mean, um, what did you think about the whole career? Or did you give, give it much thought at the time with the criminal Carter um, tent? Uh, I, 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 I was a fan of Carter, mm -hmm. based on World War II. Okay. And then uh, of course, uh, I saw the actor. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, like, I was unhappy with Shirley with Zach. Zach McCarthy. McCarthy. Were you, were you still in service? You were still in service yeah. in that. Were you still, were you still in Korea with that? Yes. Yeah. Now you um, you left Korea uh, after your after your tour. Um, where did you go to next? Uh, well, I left Korea because we were supposed to be there for eighteen months. The combat troops were there for twelve. But every time I would do the rotate, they would extend the time. And there was. The fellow that I shipped over with, that took basic with, in a unit that determined who would go with. Altenburg isn't going before I go. But he was on R&R. &R. And I, I had acquaintances in that office. Boom, I was gone. By the time he got back, I was out of there. <laughs> <coughs> you went back to Japan first? Well, uh, got a ship out of Japan, yes. Ship to Japan, on the ship. Right. And we were delayed maybe a week because the ge general size ship that we were supposed to sail on uh, took back a hundred GI follows prisoners. Big ship. Hundred prisoners. We had to wait a week for another ship. Um, one, one, up, or one, one question, I guess, or, or observation even is: um, you really sort of had a sense that there was the official system, and then there was the system of how it actually of works. Course. Yeah, I mean, now every time my wife uh, says something, I say, "Yes, ma'am." Stop! Stop doing that. Say, Look. Understand the voice of authority. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, had this been part of your personality before joining the I army? I don't. Yeah. I don't. But, but it's, you seem to be, as I said, I mean, the idea of just sort of a lot of people would have taken the bus like, well, he's the officer. And and, um, and it sounds like you picked up very quickly on how supply actually, one of the ways to keep it working is trading. I mean, that, that it, it otherwise won't work. But, but going back, you, 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 you came home and um, you still had time to serve. Um, um, and you mentioned over lunch that you didn't want to go to Colorado because of the mountains well, at the time. The government gave us a train ride from San Francisco to Colorado Springs. And then we had to make our own way home. And then back to Colorado Springs for reassignment. Got married, came back to the worst. Oh, get a sign here, get a sign here. I want to stay here. That's just too much like Korea. No. So, overall, looking back, it was something that uh, I, I, I kind of got this. It wasn't, it was uh, enjoyable in, in some sense compared to what other people were experiencing in Korea, but not not so much so that I you think would I want. Basically, it was a good time. Right. But not so much that you would want to 
live anywhere that reminds you of it. That's correct. Mm -hmm. What else is it, you're also, I think, someone reading this, I mean, Colorado Springs is not what it is today. I mean, South was, in my understanding, in the 50s, it was a much smaller. My daughter moved to Colorado Springs, and then when she moved to Knoxville, I was unhappy because I liked taking my son in law's four wheeler, four wheel drive, and going up to the mountains. Mm -hmm. But the time you have enough to have. And so you were able to manage to get transferred to Chicago, right? I asked for an assignment at Fort Sheridan, Illinois, which is very close to Milwaukee. And I got an assignment in Chicago. And 